The Siemens logo flags and outputs, M and Q, behave in a way that you might not expect. In this quick tutorial, we'll have a look at how they behave, why they behave that way, and why this behavior can be useful. Let's look at the simple logic. We're taught to think of this as an electronic logic diagram, but electronic gates all operate independently and simultaneously, whereas the PLC logic is executed sequentially, one instruction at a time. Siemens seem to be shy about publishing details of the program execution sequence, and if you have any information on the matter, I'd love if you post links in the comments. From my reading, it appears that operation is as follows. Number one, the inputs are read. Number two, the program logic is executed. And number three, the outputs are updated. Then we go back to step one again. Note that the M flags can be considered as outputs, but with no physical terminals. When the inputs are read, they're copied to an image register. So that in this example, B2 and B3 will both use the same value for input three, even if the signal on the input terminal changes state between the execution of B2 and B3. Similarly, the M and Q outputs are held in an image register until the end of the program scan, and then the register is copied to the M's and Q's. In this example, we have an input fed through a chain of 12 AND gates, turning on output Q1, and we're using markers or flags to monitor the status of all the outputs. So they show up on the simulation taskbar. We turn on the input, turn off the input, and observe that all the M relays on the status bar turn on and off simultaneously. In this example, we've simply got input one feeding through M13 to M24 and turning on Q1. We're expecting that when input one turns on, Q1 will turn on immediately at the end of the scan, but observe the marker simulations down here. So I press and hold the button and I release hold, release, and you can see the effect we're getting here is that of a chaser, where there's a delay between one input turning on and the next input turning on. So what's happening? Well, we know from our previous discussion that when input one turns on, we'll turn on the input to M13, but we know that the output M13 won't turn on until the end of the scan. So all the other logic is executed, but all the inputs to these are still off. And so Q1 remains off. At the next scan, the output of M13 is turned on. So M14 turns on, but its output doesn't update until the end of this scan. So M15 won't see it until the start of the next scan, etc. And so we have this chaser effect where the inputs turn on sequentially. As mentioned already, the flags and outputs behave exactly the same. It's just that the flags have no physical output on them. We can demonstrate this here. You can see both the M's and the Q's are running in parallel. Here I've used an AND EDGE general function to, just to give a single pulse to trigger the chain of M's and Q's. So what use can we make of this? Well, it's possible to construct our own one-shot circuit, for example, run the simulation on this, trigger the input and hold it on. And notice we can't see the output of the AND gate, but if you watch the counter, we are getting a pulse on every trigger of the input. So what's happening here is we turn on the input, it turns on input two to the AND gate, Meanwhile, the M hasn't turned on yet, and it's running through an inversion input. So the AND gate output turns on and triggers the count. At the end of the scan, the M turns on, and that turns off the AND gate. And so we just get a single pulse output. This is a bit redundant. As we've seen already, we have the AND edge general function block, which does the same thing. The output just detects a rising edge on the inputs and gives a single scan pulse output. 
Another place where it could be useful is on a first shot, single scan to reset stuff when the PLC powers up. But Siemens have already thought of that and given us the M8 initialization flag, which turns on for one scan of PLC power up. And they helpfully give it a blue background color to help identify it on our circuit diagram. The logo system does not allow recursion in a program. That is, you can't feed the output of a block back to something that affects its input. To do so would cause an infinite loop in the program execution. The end of scan update of the M and Q blocks gives us a solution to this problem. So let's look at an example. Let's turn on the simulation. And when we turn on the input here, a momentary button, we set the RS latch, turn on the output, and three seconds later, the timer output turns on. Run it again, touch, press the button, three seconds later, the output turns on. I want the timer to reset the RS latch and turn off the output. So if we try and connect this up to the reset input, we get the recursion only allowed via outputs and flags error message there. So it's preventing us doing a recursion. So if we add in an M relay, sorry, an M block, connect that up, we can now connect that back to the reset input of the RS block. Run the simulator, touch the input, two, three seconds, and the RS has reset again. So that's one possible use for it. Another we'll cover in the shift register video, but here we're using uh, outputs or M relays to solve a problem and passing the baton from one shift register to another and also to provide the loop back as we've just seen in the set reset example. Have a look at the shift register video for further details on that and how to make longer shift registers than the standard eight bits. Thanks for watching. Have a look at the playlist links below. This is one of a series of tutorials covering programming and tips and tricks to do with the logo. Like and subscribe.